Why do I do the thing that sabotages me at the moment I'm getting ready to go to <laughs> another place? <laughs> That's been my question. But he doesn't do anything about post-traumatic stress. N most people don't, let alone develop a whole ecosystem of tools because of it. This answers the question, how do I get motivated again? He's like, you said in August you did the masterclass for the veterans. Yep. Always a smash when I do talks for veterans. I'm excited about working with them because the level of nuance that I understand in the post-traumatic mind from combat, I get it. And I get it in a way that when I say it, I don't even have to know a guy's name. We can meet on the fly at gymnastics and I make a comment. And because of how in the center of his own thought process that is, he just like, hey, dude, we need to get together for a coffee or something. It happened a month ago with a special forces guy. He was in for 20 years plus. Yeah, I haven't processed through that shit, man. I, he goes, the way I process it, he goes, I just smash beers to the face. And I'm like, dude, I get it. I totally get it. And uh, so I was sharing with him the concepts that, that Jay was asking about from that masterclass back in August. That night, it was a cold group. They didn't know me. I got a private client from that group specifically. And what was the star of the show? It was Radar. <laughs> and Jay saw it in the workbook. I showed him the workbook. He goes, I highly disagree with you that you need to change this five-day format. He goes, what I think, you need to make Radar and Radar alone your webinar. That was his advice to me in a nutshell. And I'm like, dude, you don't think that's too simple? He goes, no. It's <laughs> crystal clear. It's built by somebody who knows. It's already proven and it gives them an immediate win right off the bat. They don't even need to know your name, like essentially is what he's saying, right? And I'm, it's me understanding this better and better. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to Georgia for three days tomorrow morning. And uh, I will not be thinking about this at all, but I'll be doing some visualizing as we hike outside and we're going to do all sorts of stuff. It's Gr Grayson's regional championships. Aren't you just happy that you can have the, flexibility to just you're not doing it for one kid like yeah <laughs> doing it for three of them. the other one was we were too broke to help him out yep grayson state champ 12 years old gage is 13 and gavin is 20 and the four of us are going on our first ever annual k-boys trip and, and we are very excited about it it was all started by nikki because she's so damn selfish she wanted she wanted to uh, have the weekend to herself of some quiet time. So she said, you guys just go together. I'll get you hotel rooms. And uh, I'm like, I'm just teasing about Nikki. She deserves <laughs> that quiet time away from the chaos. So we're going to go do that. I'm really excited. And then when I come back. Hit the ground running. Marquita, I, like the content, this is where it goes to the radar. This is where it is in the tool. It's the R. It's the A, the D. And I'm going to tell you this story. And I'm going to tell you this story. And it's so relatable. And I'm being so honest in a comfortable way that that's why to the, the tougher, the tough guy, military combat dude, like that message is very attractive. And, and they're like, if nothing else, I get a hook. I hook them with that for sure. Because nobody else can do that. Nobody else is doing that. You got Jocko doing leadership and yeah, combat, but he doesn't do anything about post-traumatic stress. N most people don't let alone develop a whole ecosystem of tools because of it. And yeah. I did. What do you think? Um, well, I find it ironic that that's why I called you. <laughs> or I messaged you and was like, yeah, like, it's for the radar that I want to, like, go deeper into. That so is, for you, you to you now said that to me, didn't you, yesterday? Yes, that's what we were supposed I to go through. I didn't connect like. that. <laughs> wow. I was literally going to summarize the five day challenge in 90 minutes. I would, it would have gone from a, a comfortable fire hose of sitting around for five, six days with people to a laser focused pressure washer beam that would cut through people's brains. If I did that, I would blow their heads up because of so much information is what I'm saying. When I saw him do this, the, what I see here is that process is what I call repeat but I call it divine repetition mm. because I said there's a structure to it. There's a science to this. There's a divine order. There's a spiritual and scientific nature to this and both need to be used. That's why I piss off church people because I talk like that.
I will talk about quantum and I'll talk about science and I'll say, I say God created it all. Now, whoever you're talking about with God, that's up to you. I'm not here to convince you of that. I got my faith. But intelligent design, we got to say like, it's all created. So quantum is from intelligent design. Science is too. And so is believing in something we can't see that we call faith. So I'm my agenda with revolutionary freedom, Adam Kasich's brand, is to fuse all of that. I have an article series that I've written that nobody knows about because it's not published. It's called Fusion. And, <laughs> and the tagline, it says fusing practicality and spirituality. But it's called, it's called Fusion. And that's what I believe in. Like, I would watch these guys say, don't touch any of that. And then I, that's the religious guys. And then I go over to the woo-woo people who I also like some of the stuff they're doing. And they're like, oh, if you're, if you have faith, you're dogmatic. And I'm like, I know why they're saying that, but like, I'm not like that. And so I'm like, you're both rejecting the other without even sitting down to have a conversation with each other. I'll bridge the gap for all of us out here who are wanting that done. You know, you're loving the idea of radar. Even during the challenge, that's the biggest, was the biggest thing for me is that I remember being in, in that particular session, talk to you more to kind of like solidify that idea into my mind. You know what I mean? And even when we did the VIP, like I'm like, yeah. And then now I'm coming back to it. I'm like, mm, like, you know, and I remember you said like, you know, you're going to be able to do this, like without like thought, like you would just naturally be, get, be able to do that. So I guess I want to be able to get to there, but then that means that I have to, be able to do it in a way that it makes sense to me, if that makes sense. <laughs> well, I made sure not to interrupt you. Sorry. <laughs> no, nope. listen to me. That, what you just did right there, that's the golden, platinum, diamond, everything feedback that, that I want to talk with people about to hear because there's so much growth potential that I can take that and use it with more than sitting in two hours of a masterclass and trying to figure something out because you're taking me from ground zero, exactly where we are in this moment, real life feedback in the nuance of your thought process and what you have going on in your life. I don't know. It's beautiful. And I appreciate it. And that's why I didn't, I, I was being very yeah. careful to not talk. Jay said yesterday, he goes, Dude, I don't think you need to like overhaul the challenge, but I'm going to be hyper aggressive in a way that I assert who it's for, right? If you're not this person or you're not the spouse of this person or you're not the parent, this is not for you, right? Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Radar is helping you get an immediate micro win in an area that really matters to you. Probably something that's, that's really negative that you want to stop some pain or make a change, right? So that's the micro about one thing. And then in the challenge, take a macro leadership look at your whole life. My private coaching is where I get micro with you into your life, not just yeah. micro about one thing or macro about your life. But now we're going to get micro inside your life, wherever you lead me in terms of the context of the situations of your life. And that's the private coaching. Drew will tell me this. He goes, how about you ask them if they'd like to join you for seven minutes for an introductory call to see if they'd like to save 17 years, which is what you've invested to give them the shortcut you're giving them. He's like, you can give breakthroughs in very short order because you can use very few words to do it because you understand the process so well. He was complimenting me about my experience in the process, right? More it when we were, yeah, it was different conversations and stuff. We were actually talking about the fact that I, I had beaten myself up for a long time about not enough finish line level execution because I would always get confused or doubtful or insecure along the way. And I'd restart something. I can relate that. He goes, you have become an expert <clears throat> and you even love the process. The process has become unconsciously competent to you. And that's your value. And that's why you can save the time and, you know, all these things. So get it out there. Right. That was his message. And I think this, this, this I'm right like out. learning at the same time. I know I can see so it in your face. That's why, I keep going. That's why I don't get too sensitive about my talking because I see you're picking it up too, I think. But yeah, no, I'm yeah. To, like, it's there. I'm going to put together this radar landing page. I'm going to build this thing in no time. I'm going to build the, the, I already have the presentations ready. I just need to kind of take the one from August and update it a little bit and just do that and then leave room for me to talk with guys 
and gals that'll be on this thing and have conversations. If I did that, which was not a pure webinar because I'm going to do it live. Jay said, I encourage you to make it evergreen. I said, it will be evergreen after I do it a half a dozen times and make it, make it laser sharp. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm going yeah. to do. I'm going to be so damn confident in this thing that if you don't like it, it just means you're not my person. Yeah. That's it. Because it's going to That's crush. True. It's going to crush. If you're like a podcaster, you're like, you need Pat. If you're an email, you need Amy. Like, Brand, you're trying to build a brand, you need BBG. Like, that's how I look at it. You want to get through post-traumatic stress. If you want to get rid of the, the shame and the guilt of, of losing yourself and feeling the need to hide and, and whatever that comes from that world, feeling broken, will I ever be whole again? Adam's your fucking guy. And start with Radar. Because this dude's still messed up, but look what he made. Yeah. I like it. You know, we've talked about like me doing coaching and consulting and, you know, the part, the, profession, the corporate part of me wants to be like, yeah, you know, I want to consult and like, I want to grow brands. <laughs> like I want to do that because I like that. Right. And that's yes, what I'm and normally, like but for me now, like talking to you, I'm just thinking to myself, like what I really, really want to do at this time, what I'm calling to now is to get people to start people that are creative to just start. Huh. Like, just start. Because yeah. that was such a pain point for me personally was to start. It took yep. me 11 years, 10 years. Right. For some reason, that particular thing, yeah, no. Like, I I, I spend so much time thinking and perfecting and... Yeah, I get it. To the point where it turns into procrastination, you know? If you tell me, you Marquita. know, if you say to me... Sorry. No, no, no. What happened? I do that. Right before I launch publicly, I do that. I don't do it as bad. I, I procrastinate. I overthink. I'm too much planning. <laughs> what you just said before, that's why you don't start. That mm -hmm. in the past, because I've already proven that I go public now. Like that's not a problem now. But right. I still battle some of the natural stuff from in the, the past. In your head. That's right? why radar works so well. That, <laughs> yes. That's because that you do. And it. I, I can do it, right? Like, but that's why I was saying to you, like, I, you know, when I went back and looked at it, I'm like, I really want to learn this because I know that it'll help me because I can get through it, right? Like, I can identify, I have that self awareness, right? And that's why I keep coaching so I can have accountability. So, like, I know how to do things now, but it takes me, like, you know, one of the biggest things was like massive action, right? Like yes. Tony Robbins, like massive, massive action. Just do it. Like just do something and just let it blow up, you know? Yep. <laughs> and then, you know, you do that so many times and then you kind of like, you know, did, do that. But I find that I do it in the very little things, like the things that there's a part of me that knows, like, I know if I do this, that eventually it's going to lead to this desired outcome yeah but i won't do it you know for some reason there's just like oh well i'll do it tomorrow like it's just always like something i'm gonna give you an example this is gonna help you i believe um so i'll give you an example so i was told by my coach or well we agreed should i say not told we agreed that she wants me to use my Instagram because she feels like there are customers, people that are waiting on me to give this offer, right? Of coaching. She wants me to do a post. She wants me to tell people on Instagram that this is the service that I'm offering. Yep. Now, I still haven't done it yet, right? <laughs> I was in the moment I was excited. Yes, I'm doing this, right? So something happened, I made an excuse. The next day, I was like, I'm definitely doing this. Like, I'm going to have integrity. I'm going to do this. And I went to copy and paste the words because I already have the copy from, like, uh, I have the copy from the website, that I, the, the website template that I've made. And for some reason, I couldn't type the words. So I'm like, oh, I need to find the Word document. I can't find the, the copy, the, the copy to copy it, right? So then I'm like, oh, let me go do something else. So here we are. What's today? Thursday. Here we are a week. And the Canva template with 
part of with a half done post is still on my computer. Why? Why is it so hard? I have the wording. I have the photos. <laughs> I like I have the template. Why is it not up? And I think part of it is what you mentioned earlier about you in the sense that there's a lot of people that I know on my Instagram that I think are going to be scrutinizing what I'm doing. Oh, another thing. That was mine. Oh, another thing. Yep. That's exactly what it is. Because I'm thinking to myself, they're like, well, what about the shoes? <laughs> Didn't you used to sell juice? I got asked that this week. How crazy is that? <laughs> That's 15 years ago. <laughs> Didn't you used to sell juice? Yeah. I, there's a part of me that feels like I have and give you an example. So I have a mentor that I have specifically for fashion, for footwear design. She's awesome. She's a teacher. She's a teacher at one of the best schools in the world for shoe, shoe design. So many big designers come out of that school. And I got an opportunity to go there for summer school. So I feel really good about that because I manifested that. And I also manifested that she was going to be my friend, the teacher, because I looked her up before I took the class and I said, oh, yeah, we're going to be friends. Yes. And it happened. Yep, yep. Like she she chased me to be to help me with my business. That's awesome. <laughs> right? So I literally looked at who the instructor was, looked at her profile, saw that she had success in what I wanted to do, and I was like, we're gonna be friends. She's gonna she's gonna help me. I left it alone. She literally was like, Can I have your email? I wanna keep up with you, blah blah blah. Started following me on Instagram and like we're still whatever. Anyways, I referred another girl that I met who was trying to start a footwear uh, brand. And I referred her to her to help her for her manufacturing because she was like an agent or whatever for, for that as well. And Ooh, this particular girl. Your face. Well, something's trying to bite your face right there. What is that? Oh, what is it? it's a coat. <laughs> you scared the crap out of me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm being a smart ass. I'm feeling extra frisky today. Go ahead. That's so funny. But yeah, so anyway, so this girl now was able to find somebody to make her shoes, launch, whatever, whatever. And then she started doing coaching. Yes. Or she started saying, oh, I'm going to help other people. I'm going to start teaching other people how to start a footwear brand and all this stuff. And I remember this mentor made a comment and said, you know, she doesn't like, basically, who is she to start offering this service? Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Right. So that stuck in my mind because I had wanted to do this from then, you know, but she was just like, like she, she basically was saying to me, like, she's just not there yet to be offering this service. So in my mind, I'm still hearing that to me. You get what I'm saying? Yep. Okay. I have something to offer on this. I'm writing this note down because this is really powerful and this is so common understand and okay <clears throat> you you know this and i'm gonna remind you because it's for me too this helped me break through part parts of my what i just generally call the fear of man no one who's doing anything insults others now everyone insulting others never does anything then the age-old advice that we just have to practice to make it real radar helps with it tremendously it's one of the things that i've used radar for is this so you said why do i do that you can still hear me good i'm listening what, yep i want to make sure because i took the headphones out and put them back in all right no. why do why do i do that because i did too but i did it right before it was time to publish right before it's time mm. to execute right before it's time to tell people like the guy with the book if you hide in the shadows until you turn on the price tag to sell your book he goes, you're not going to create the trust that you need to create the, the audience. And that mm. makes so much sense to me because I've hit mm. so much in the dark. He goes, but if you want to crawl out of that dark hole of obscurity, he goes, just start sharing all your stuff everywhere. Yeah. And because all I you're doing, always... 
you're giving content. You're not giving your time. Right. Oh, if they get my content, they could do it themselves. Not really because all. No, not really. No, it's every creator makes content out of their own mind. So it's, it's not just, you can do this and you'll get my, now look like Pat, Pat, for example, the free ebook. I did not go buy his podcasting course for $750 because I didn't need it. I used his free course and it was enough for me. But you know what I did do? I bought a handful of other things from him. So why do I do that? Why do we stop? I put two things. I put two arrows. Number one is identity. It is 100% the conditioning that we are currently operating under, which is heavily influenced by the dogma delta. But do you actually need to know what thought? is driving that necessarily or can it be multiple thoughts uh, well there can be multiple la- layers of conditioning that lead to the thought at the moment you tell yourself i got the words oh you know what i can't continue that i need to go get the word doc the parts in between the spots look at you know your speed bumps you know where you 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 knock yourself off into the ditch you know those moments you're you're rolling along you're rolling along And then, oh, I got to go do this or I got to go do that. I better fold the laundry real quick. I better go get that workout in because the weather's going to get bad later tonight. Whatever the moment I do this still to this week, I've done this. Only I'm catching myself and I'm working out of it. It's because I'll shake my head at myself. I'll laugh. When I'm by myself, that's what you would see. I did it. Oh, I went over here and now, oh, you know what? Let me go get this PDF done over here first. And I go, that's not essential for this. And I go back to it. If you catch yourself in that transition point, that's isolating the moment. Dig into the moment. What are you thinking? What are you feeling? Who's in mind? What just Mm -hmm. happened? Maybe nothing happened that triggered anything. It was a moment where you realized you were moving toward the new picture of yourself. You were moving toward the conscious dream you have in your frontal lobe. But the subconscious, the elephant, will not let the ant go there because your identity has to remain secure. Until you reset it, the new picture, and then beginning using the tools like radar to overwrite those things, it won't change. That's why it doesn't change. You do need to know the thought. That's how to isolate it. If you don't, if you do all that, if you do that, And then you begin, okay, the radar is going to help me with this one thought. I'm only concerned about this one right now. I can't think about my money, bad habits, or what my mom did to me for relationships. I can only do this one thing right now. That This is why you don't need to go unpack your whole childhood. This is the reason why we don't need to get into the depth of our traumas from a long time ago. This is the reason why. This is science. This is woo. This is divinity. This is how we transform ourselves by renewing our mind. This is the process. It's not more complicated than your current identity in your subconscious is a much lower floor, Dr. Hardy, than the picture of the dreams you believe in that you want, that you visualize with your conscious mind, which is the dream. You need to make the identity that's down here go to that top, go up to the dream. Your identity needs to match the dream. That's the simple motivational way to look at this. The identity, the way you truly see yourself, when you think in the dark recesses of your mind, that has to become the woman who knows that that dream is hers, that she's worthy of the dream because today you know you're not. You know you're not. When I say you know, I mean your subconscious. It's a belief. It's not true. Mm Mm-hmm. Or false. It's not good or bad. It just is because of conditioning. Right. Let me give you my quick concrete example. When I was in New Orleans with Addison, I knew I was coming back and I was going to be off kilter again for some days. I I don't know how people can travel and then go go to work on Monday and perform. I don't know. I don't know that I, I don't know how I did it. I get done traveling, having the time of my life with my kids at sporting events, and I can't function for work again until Wednesday. I used all last week to rest. And then I'm like, okay, toward the end of the week, it was actually Thursday. I started working again. That's when it drew me back in. The artist was comfortable again. And I'm like, okay, (laughs) okay, okay, you fruity fuck. Let's go. Let's get to work. I have both, right? That alpha and that woo-woo always going on. And I like it. It works for me. I go do some things and then I'm like, okay, 
I, I think I reached out to you or you reached out to me and I was going to, that was happening again. Then I meet with Jay. It's all rolling in momentum, but that was another seven days because today's Thursday and now I'm going it. But the week that got done, it was all brainstorming. What if the RYV was revamp your vision was three days. That's where it all started in writing. When I was began writing, this is what it would look like. I coached Austin at the end of last week. That fired me up, you know, seeing where he's at. He's expanding and he's continuing with me and, and he wants to stay. So we're going to do deep dive work on identity and we're getting into radar and all the same stuff that you and I are talking about. Revamp your vision challenge. Should it be a webinar? That was the next day. I went through and then I'm like, you know what? I'm going on this Georgia trip and that's another wrench in the spokes, man. It, it's just... Plainly put, it interrupts work significantly, right? It interrupts mm -hmm. creative momentum significantly. I love it. It's why I want, it was the biggest dream. It was a bigger dream than this stuff, but I have it. And this stuff is right on the heels of that. So I know that I'm doing the right thing. And plus accountability, like you said, advisors, good people you can trust. All that's happening. How did I get going in such an intense work mode again? All this energy is water, sleep, and no sugar. Anyway, that's what's all happened. Why did I get there? Why am I working out every single day? Why am I doing strength training? Why do I go in the cold water right after I get up again? And I'm going into red light faithfully. I'm drinking water. I'm not drinking it. Why am I doing it all? Why, why did that change happen now and I couldn't do it for three or four months? Why? Or maybe six months. I was going to say, is that identity? Part of it yeah. for sure. But I knew the real truth was that I did not have a clear, overwhelming Get me out of bed driving reason. Okay, I, I've, I have more than a reason now. The reason used to be to get out of Michigan and pay bills without worries. That like they used to say it all the time. Once you get like to where you're stable, you don't have to be wealthy. But once you are and you don't have to think about every dime you spend, money doesn't, it's like, it's not all that motivating. And, and I remember that being said, right? And so I feel that for sure. But I needed, I knew that I needed a new material goal. This was me. I figured out, dude, I, the last time I had a material goal was my backyard. And not that I haven't been motivated since then. I've done a hell of a lot of things since the pool was done two and a half years ago, but I didn't set any new material goals whatsoever. And yet I have one in the material. And I, it was under my nose since October. My wife left her old training job. No one's even here. I don't know why I keep looking over there. <laughs> I, I keep thinking I'm hearing something or like, I don't want her to hear me talking. And she, uh, we built the gym in the first week of October in the garage. We had, we had prayed about that for, for a long time. And she left that place where she had a secure 1099 income and turned the faucet off on that income. We brought Grayson home to homeschool at the same time. I couldn't do any work in here for two weeks because I was in the garage doing handyman work that I'm not all that gifted and skilled at doing. That was happening. And then she began her personal training and getting up at 4 a.m. and training clients. And now she's got part of this battle on a daily basis that she loves what she does and she hates doing it at 4 a.m. <laughs> and it's real. Yeah. The way she hates it, she's not, Nikki has always been a sleep in person, a take a nap person. I've always been, I want to get up. I want to stay up late and I don't want to ever take naps because I'm going to miss something. I'm like a little <laughs> child when it comes to that stuff. Still, that's hilarious. I saw the pain that she was having with that. And I realized who she is, who she's always been. And I go, she's feeling what I used to feel in a job. The idea of having a boss is death to me. I'd rather be dead been permanently employed. <laughs> yeah, that's really you. Totally true. Now, she probably feels that way about waking up at 4 a.m. <laughs> so that's like my brother. My brother, I, I understand it. My brother's so, like that. I did. I don't know if you happen to catch it, but I made a little thing about Nikki and I's honeymoon. I showed the picture of us under the arches on Facebook. Did you have? I know you're not on Facebook a lot, but I took a picture. It was our honeymoon, right? And I showed her, and she said some. She made some crack about getting new ones done but that was our honeymoon of, of our wedding <laughs> thank you and my material are you you gotta get off no i'm I, uh, I missed it already anyway thank you okay uh it's not even your fault but i think this is way more valuable i'll catch the next class 
Well, no, because I'm being, uh, they have a five minute grace period. So there was oh, traffic. So I missed it anyway. So honeymoon wait, arches. Wait to wrap this up. Here's the wrap up. I, I, I said, <laughs> I'm so visual, right? I make these two arches. I have, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pull it up. Oh, it's right here. And boop. Done. So see that arch, those two arches where we're standing there together? Mm hmm. Her, me on one side, her on the other. That's December 2001. This is where they started with her and then me. Okay. I was like, hey, babe, let's do this. You take one of me. I'll take one of you. Try to frame it the same. I mm -hmm. said, I'll make a composite when we get home. And then, you know, 22 years after the wedding, she got the, pot, the, the composite done. I made that last week. Wow. So I made that little thing, put it together on Canva, had a little fun and showed her. And she goes, make reservations because that's her style. Short to the point. Do it. Get it done. Make reservations. Not, 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 not dreamy. And can you imagine what it could be like? And we could do this and we could do that. No, she's like, set the shit up, set up the flight. Let's go. And that got the material goal. It lit the match. So I'm looking at this and I'm going, okay, wow, reservations. That is firing me up. Now, here's the deal who do I got to be to get that done? That's the picture. The aspirational identity. We take the dream that we truly want consciously, and then we have to have a picture of us who's able to make that happen. I was not in my current picture, and I could get into more about the material goals. There's no point. I think I'm driving this home. Like, gonna do that. I gotta get flights. I need to build about, I need, I need to probably to make, you know, five, six grand to make this work. And I'm like, how do I wanna do it? And I told Drew, it has to come from my business. And he's the only other person I've told besides you. I said, it has to come from my business, my offerings, my speaking. So it's really driving me. And the only way that I knew that I can be, who's, what's the picture of the guy that I have in my mind of my next level? My stuff works. I'm selling my book. There's no money attached to it, but I'm known, I'm growing, I'm effective, and I don't have any more doubts ever about whether my stuff is good for somebody else or not. I have a flow. I have an ecosystem set up. I have a couple people on my team that help me with leverage. And every day, that's my life right here in this house. But as my profession, it's in place. It's built, it's established, and it's growing. And I'm making a difference. That's the vision. That's the man. I'm not that guy today. How do I get to be that guy? Because that guy can have, handle seven nights of luxury, royal, royal luxury, across the world for his wife as a gift to take back to the honeymoon, to take pictures again on the, on the life size chess or the checkers board, you know, or the chess pieces. Yeah. The chess board. I'm like, I want to do that again. I got all the pictures right in a box. I need to be the guy to do that. The only way that I'm going to do that is if I'm not letting myself off the hook. The only way that I'm not going to let myself off the hook is if I'm in a training program, I know how I live, how I operate. When I'm doing that, I'm a fucking killer. I am K6 through and through, and it makes me strong, and I'm fit, and my brain's creative, and I'm light, and I'm loving, and I'm resilient, and I don't judge people as much, hardly ever at all when I'm in those modes. But that's how I got to that point. That's literally the thought process I went through. And I've changed a routine that's very difficult to change, and I found a way to do it. And I could even get minutia about how I did it this time, because I knew I had to get myself going again. But that's what I did, because I know that Without the right picture, without the right reason drawing me to that want, I'm telling you, it's very difficult for me to find material desires. I don't give a crap about a lot of like stuff in general. I have fun with everything. I want to go on your boat. I want to go for a ride and, and go or go hunting with gear. I like it's all awesome, but I don't it doesn't drive me to do anything like I, I, I want I got a dream for a 4000 acre in ranch in Texas. That's a dream. That moves me to write my book. That moves me to do things. But I'm telling you this, like if it was because I was going to be able to have a helicopter pad and that's going to turn me on or I can fly first class everywhere, even though I would, I'd probably kill a small puppy to do that. But, <laughs> but even that, like even doing it forever to get my own plane, to get away from people, it's all a desire. None of it drives me to do what I have to do in a moment when I start procrastinating. When I yeah. avoid publishing, when I avoid starting, those things don't get me to move. And I know that I'm dying because of it. I know it. And it doesn't matter to me. What matters 
is a reason that my soul, my heart truly cares about. And on this one, for the first time, it's got really nothing to do with me. I have my freedom. I need to get Nikki. I, I want to give Nikki back what she's allowed me to get. Ooh, I just had a very interesting breakthrough in saying that before I basically use like my family as that, like the things that I wanted to do. Like I want to buy my, my grandmother a house. I want to retire my mom. I want to do these things. Right. And then maybe about a year or two ago, I was like, you know what? I'm living for these people. Like I want to do something for myself, but I haven't been able to find that. Like that, those things allowed me to be able to stay up, wake up early, make money, (laughs) get creative, put myself out there, like do all of that. And so I feel like that's where I've been in the last year or so. Well, no, last year I did kind of good. I had my own thing, but it still wasn't as intense as when I had those goals of like, I want to do this Maldives trip. I want to take my family to other safari. Like I want to be able to take them back to Kenya because I've been to Kenya and like done the safari. And I'm like, I want to be able to do a trip. So I think I, I don't know, like, if I'm looking at that in a, in the wrong way, because I started to feel like I'm trying to do these things for my family and they don't really care about these things. And they're taking advantage of me. <laughs> so I don't want to use them as goals. <laughs> so it's like, now I need to find... <laughs> Now that I could, be, find that that could be so depressing if we went into that more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's a whole thing. But I laugh because I do relate at a level. Yeah, yeah. so I, I basically released myself from this. I need to be my family savior. But the trade off of that has been that that burning desire, that material goal, isn't mm-hmm. like I don't have something that's as intense as that though so i have this the peace of mind of not the stress gone from not feeling like i have to be everybody's safe so i have that relief but then on the other side i don't have that that same level of like intensity the fire to go for the things that i want you know what i started praying about two three weeks ago the urgency that i feel to get my stuff done and moving to the point, my heart's desire for work right now is simply to be the best leader and salesperson I can be. Coach Adams always ain't going nowhere. I want to be in a position where I can go out and put all my sales skills and my relationship skills and my network and leverage all 25 years, leverage 17 years of pure character, not doing people wrong, and just go out and move, shake, talk, and have podcasts and sell stuff because my stuff is behind me and I know what to give you where you need it and how to hand it out wherever I'm going. I'm not done building yet, right? And I want to get there. And the next step for that is to have something that's a legitimate standalone product to move. And the challenge is it, right? And I got to adjust it a little bit, but I am there. That gets me really excited. But What I started praying about that's related to getting that done is I did all that. I did the the challenge work where I burnt myself. I didn't burn out. I I wore myself out since mid-January to the middle of March. I did that because of commitment and maturity. I knew I had to, so I showed up and did those things. I don't, I can't go to that vision that I just painted for you of this big, that big professional life. I can't go there being who I am today. And I know that. So I, and I'm not going to go there on commitment and know-how or maturity. I know myself enough. I won't. I'll keep the impact small. I'll talk to people who I talk to. And then I'll also have a sense of frustration. I'll be forever discontent because I didn't deliver on what I know I could have done. So I started praying for the same fire that I had when I first met, heard of, read about Jesus. And I said a prayer asking God, if you're real, can you help me out? Like, this would be sweet. I'll follow you. I was rough, man. And (laughs) I, 
for six, 12, 18 months, that honeymoon phase of faith for a new kid coming out of what I left into that, I was fearless. I was assertive. I was in a band. I was rapping spiritual lyrics in bars. They weren't preachy, but they were spiritual. And like hair on fire. Then I traced myself back to different times when I've done this, when I did it at the medical lab, when I blew up my medical sales and that went, did what it did. My hair was on fire for a while. And I'm like, I want that. So I want Lord help my soul be on fire again. Like praying that my soul would catch fire again. And it has, it has Mm -hmm. the the flame is not a bonfire yet. I don't think imagine what the bonfire Mm -hmm. will look like. (laughs) <laughs> but because it's not, it's a small, secure flame. And it's because of the routines that I put into place for training physically and my hydration and my sleep. And I only got there because I finally made the material goal for my wife powerful enough to move my ass into it. Cause I don't want her to feel this the way she feels. I see her face at 7 PM. She doesn't even want to be awake. She just like everything drains out of her past mid afternoon. And that's the life of a person, a lot of personal trainers because they get up at that three, four, eight. That's their life, right? They are small. I'm the one who likes to work out that early. So I know that I've had a miserable trainer before when she's like, why do you want to work out at 445? Like, I really don't want to be up. Yep. You know, and I knew I needed that picture. She's like, you sure you don't want to come at nine? I'm like, no, I want to get it out the way. (laughs) Yes. But yeah, that's just me going backwards through how I got to the point of your your soul has to be on fire for you to go do the big stuff that you know you got to do. So how do I get my soul on fire? Just reverse it, right? How do I get my soul on fire? Well, let me look back into when it's been on fire. Okay. It was here, here, here in my life. Cool. Well, you know, and then you go through it. It's like I, I went through it whole front ways and back ways, and this is brand new and fresh for me. I'm definitely this, doing this, this easily, night, Marquita. Tonight, would you, let me ask you this question: Would you care, hypothetically, or reality, if I literally cleaned this up and published it as a video or a podcast? Yeah, why not? If there's anything personal, I'm, I have a very high sensitivity filter to keep people's integrity and their dignity safe their their dignity safe but but i want to i'm going to watch this a handful of times especially after we just stopped shooting the shit so much and we got really into heavy like into the <laughs> business because like this is the freshest process that i have to show how this answers the question how do i get motivated again yeah, you know, the, the elusive rabbit that runs from us all. Like, it's like, how do I get motivated again? And I've written on this a lot before. I say, motivation is emotion. So don't be too concerned about motivation. If you ask a better question, I, I think it's the wrong question. If you ask a better question, I think you'll get a better answer. The, the real question that you're, on, you're wanting answered is, how do I stay inspired? Because when you're inspired, then you'll keep doing the work. You know you will. You'll get up early. You'll stay up late. You'll suffer through weather. It doesn't. You'll be hungry. You'll skip meals. It doesn't matter. You'll forget to eat when you're inspired. Yeah. But motivation is like how I feel. Like it's what you feel right after a run. <laughs> that it's good, but it's not. It's a snack. So how do I get inspired? Well, what lights your soul on fire? And then we're gonna walk Ooh. through that, right? Where have you been this way before? What did it then? When, where have you been lately? What have you been focused on? Well, I've been trying to get my mom a new house. Really, for seven years. <laughs> it might not be the thing that, that drives you. It's a phenomenal goal. You'll get it if you figure out the real thing that drives you. For a long time, yeah. I wanted to get my mom. I wanted to bless her with a Jaguar, which was I knew was her dream car. In high school, she talked about it all the time. And then my dad... She never got the Jaguar. Dude, they've had stuff since then. They got money. If she wants a Jaguar, she can have a Jaguar now. They got a weed business plus their pension. Like, she's got a BMW. Like, there's no problem there. They're, they have that. But before that even happened, I'm like, that I talked about wanting to get my mom a Jaguar on my first dreams list in 2007. That is not a motivating dream for me. When I get the means to do something like that, I'll get my mom something. But I got to stop acting like that's one of my dreams. That's fair. I, I, it's crazy because you 
it's almost like you were reading my mind in this sense because <laughs> like when you said the whole like it's been seven years like it's because re- I was thinking in my head like damn like <laughs> when I was do- like just thinking about actually the frustration of that mm. related to it yeah like uh-huh. I instantly before you said that like and I was thinking about the things that used to motivate me is like damn, like, how do you deal with the frustration when you feel like you've been chasing these certain things and then they just have not, like, materialized? Yeah. And then then you were like, yeah, seven years, but maybe that's not strong enough motivation for you. I think if you don't get it within maybe a couple years, it might not be a thing that drives you. You need to be on your way or getting it, like, to where it's super clear, right? Like, there was a long time we were on our way here this ultimate physical dream of mine was to live in paradise away from snow. And then we get it and we have that. And you're like, but that took me like 2007 to 2017. That was a solid decade. And all over the place, what am I doing? I'm building the business. I'm consulting. Oh, and then I joined the army. Oh, and he builds another business and it's building up. And then, oh, he goes to Afghanistan. Okay, let's see what happens. Holding pattern. I come back. And I hide for two years because I had no idea what happened to me. Why I was the way I was when I came back. The whole entire time, if you look at it on a daily drip basis, the line did this. It always has done this. I told Nikki, it seems like our whole entire life is made up of this. Trying to bounce back and falling again. But the whole freaking time, the line is doing this. The whole time, Mark. Yeah. I bet yours is too if you stop and look at it soberly. It yeah. feels for a dreamer, for someone who's not scared of slipping and falling and going again, those aren't the issues. We have the toughness in spades. We look down on people when we see that they don't have it or how weak some can be. It's, it's hard. Like we pity them or feel bad or... We don't, that is never an issue for us. Our issue is, why do I do that? Why do I do the thing that sabotages me at the moment I'm getting ready to go to another place? (laughs) That's been my question. Like I literally wrote, I literally wrote that down the other day. And I also talked to my friend about it. You literally said it. Like, that's literally what I said. I was like, that's been my life. This literally slam. I was like, boom. (laughs) I just went through a, I literally just went through a slam where, like you said, like if if it's a good, a a strong enough goal, like you'll get to it. So for example, when I moved from the States, I mean, when I moved from Dubai, my goal was I want to get settled. I want to get a certain, I had a credit score goal and I had a goal for the business. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So I literally did that. I came back to the States. I pretty much did it. In about a year, a year ish, maybe under a year, I hit all those goals. Like I had written down, like I want to do this, I want to do this, I want. Like I did all those things. I did it within a year. I literally did all of those things, and then November of last year, like after I completed, like <laughs> it's when the crash happened, it, and course. everything just went to. Of course, because you peaked. You peaked in your subconscious, not your conscious. That's what happened. You hit your ceiling that you had set in your subconscious conditioning, your identity. I definitely did. Yep. And so did I to a degree when our backyard got done. To a degree. I didn't lose motivation because my impact, like my motivation is to get the story out in the book. Like that has to happen before I die. All these courses and things, these are great. These are to show value. But the real agenda I have is for people to get my book, read it and change their life. It's to, it's to transform their, their relationship spiritually with their creator. It's then to go out if they have a spouse or want one to make that thing awesome. I call it the most human, the most important human relationship you'll ever have is your significant other, your spouse. I'm strong on marriage. I don't get political and social. I believe, boom, the spouse union. Bam, number one. Then the kids. How do you flourish these young little, help these young people flourish and not lord over them like you own them? When we realize we're not 
parents, but we are guides. We're spiritual guides. We are to guide them. How do we do that? By teaching them not to step in the crap that we stepped in and showing them mindsets and blah, blah, blah. Like all that goes into place. It all falls into place. But that's not going to get there unless you paint, unless that's a desired identity to have. If that does, because that's going to come with a whole lot of work. And like, you know who Yellow Wolf is? Sounds familiar, but I don't think so. He's got this lyric. To get everything I wanted in this lifetime, I had to put my beliefs on the front line. To get everything Mm. I wanted in this lifetime, I had to put my beliefs on the front line. For me, that meant direct spirituality type stuff, being comfortable with what I believe in, and then just saying it and let the cards fall where they may and, and not care what Uncle Ale and Aunt Tony in the mountains of Northeast Tennessee Think about it in between snake handles. I do love them as people. But the point is, I looked at that for myself. Boom. And then maybe the song will inspire you too. But what does that mean? Like, how did you do that? How'd you do it in a year? It wasn't because the goal was, it was the, why was it the right goal? Because it was the one that lit your soul on fire. That's why. If the soul is not inspired, if we're not inspired, mind, body, spirit, if we're not flowing in our divine our divine delta, we can't get there. We can't even stay motivated beyond substances or, you know what I mean? Like there's no yeah. escape. There's no escape that can soothe that. That's why video games, porn, drinking, gambling all lead to more of the same thing. It doesn't help you get back on track. <laughs> right. It's to find the thing that moves your soul into action will move your body and then your mind is in, you got it in your mind in spades. Like that's the key. And you find, I found it by looking back and reflecting and that's where radar comes in. It comes in for what do I want? It comes in for it. Look, radar is there for exactly what it is. It's to discover something, whether what's hurting us or what we need to help us. Your mind is (laughs) ripping. I know. <laughs> I love it. You're you're steady at 4,500 RPM. You're cruising at 90 miles an hour, man. I can see it. I love it. Does those, do those concepts help? I think for me, like, no, this is super, like, yeah. super helpful. Um, I, I think it gives me, gives me like, the, a more of a, like, overview of, like, how to just be aware, like, to build that awareness right and like yes. to so now it's like more of a conscious thing like now it's like positive reinforcement i would say into like seeing the importance of why you need to kind of start to have that awareness right so for me but the key is it's kind of what you talked about in your challenge right like like before you get there I feel like you need something to be aware of, right? Like, for example, okay, why do I keep doing this? Am I refined on what it is that I want? The vision almost has to come, be formed in some type of way before you can start to use the radar. Not necessarily, but... That's good. You get what I'm saying? Like, it's, there's it's some good. time that it's you good, need to understand. Let me volley this like, back to you. What if rather than that, all you needed to have was knowing that something's not right? Something feels off. I just can't get it going. Uh, that something I'm frustrated. There's this every you have, to, but that takes an aware to realize every day when a clock strikes a certain time and you're a, a pit in your stomach happens. Like, let's say, oh, it's six o'clock and dinner's over. Oh, next day, most people dreading their job because they're first dreading, they're remembering traffic. And now they're remembering all those negative emotions and they get triggered. And maybe the evening they, they want that glass of wine or that extra smoke or whatever, right? Doesn't, that's not, it's finding what you don't want to tolerate anymore. If you would stop for a second and ask yourself, Am I okay with being frustrated or would I not like to, would I like to not be frustrated anymore? Most people are just walking through life frustrated. 
I call him the sleepwalker in the deltas, but it's a frustration. Benjamin Franklin said it first that we know of. Most men die at 25 and they wait till 75 to be put in the ground, right? We know this. It's all the same. That person has to realize whether or not they're cool with that. That's why I came up with that little quote that says, whatever you tolerate, you get to keep. Yeah. The question that people need to ask, you nailed it when you said awareness. When they first asked me in BBG, what is the first thing you do when you sit down with a new client? And I'd say, okay, first, before anything, I need to understand who they are. Okay, you got through that. Rapport is established. Cool. The first thing I need to do is help them raise their awareness to why we're even sitting down for real because they don't know yet. They just know something is is drawing them and they think they got it. It's this, but I bet you they don't know. And so I'm going to help them raise their awareness. That's number one. That was in the workbook. In the identity pathway, I think on day two, it, it, like I, I talked about it. It said the first thing, something happened. Like number one is we got to raise awareness. Amen. Yeah. And then there's an event that happens. Boom. Traffic. Mm-hmm. Job. I get, I, I get every night at dinner. I'm drawn to alcohol. Why? Well, I bet it's not because you just love it. And I'm not knocking on this, but I know that people use it to calm down, to go to sleep. And I don't think they would do that if they didn't, if they loved their mornings. I don't think they'd do it if they loved what they did during the day. I'm generalizing drastically here, but you know, that that's radar. I don't think you need a vision to make radar work. I think you need to have something that you're sick of. Yeah. Then you'll never get off the bottom. You'll just be a little tiny jumping flea if you don't get the vision. The vision's got to come next. Now, the vision might happen first. There's no problem. They used to say the dream or the dread, right? What drives you, the dream or the dread? I think it's something similar. We have to become aware. Is there something we really want or is there something that we really want to stop? And whether it's our behavior or something happening to us, right? Like, but yes, awareness has to happen. What is that thing? That's like, that would be a great intake question for if somebody wanted to coach and apply for coaching. Like, I would ask that. What are you hating right now in your life? I might even use that word. What do you hate? Well, that's probably too strong, too strong, too dramatic. What's bothering you right now that you want to stop? What's but why? What's why is it dramatic? Like? Well, because what if someone has a, a pretty good gig going on, but they don't hate anything about their life, but they're not, they know they're not living their potential and they want to. There's a frustration there, but they don't hate anything. I would test it. Sometimes you, sometimes you can be in autopilot to the point where the del- the delta, the dogma delta, is telling you that everything is. I should be happy. I should be grateful. Yeah. I should be content. Right. When in actuality, there's something deeper that you don't like. So I'll give you an example of that for me. I have a deep seated like hate for the fact that I'm single and I'm not married and I don't have kids. But to on the outside, I'm like, yeah, it's okay. It's gonna happen when it's gonna happen. Like. It is, you know, I'm supposed to be focusing on something else. You know, God will make it happen when it's going to happen. Maybe I need to do this work before it can happen. You know, these are my things, right? Like, that's what's driving me to say that I'm content with that part of my life. But I'm really not. Right. That's a big right? deal right there. Saying so, loud- I've always heard, like, oh, don't worry about it. You know, my mom. That's why I stopped talking to her it's going to happen when it's going to happen. I feel like when you do this, that's when it's going to happen. Just keep praying about it. Let me ask you this. Let's get (laughs) real quick impromptu. Wow. That was power packed. I hope you were able to connect the dots in your life. This was a real look inside one of my organic strategy sessions. You spent an hour with us. I had to stop there rather than give you the rest of that 16 minutes, 17 minutes that was following. She received another breakthrough about that topic. We were finishing up as I interrupted right here, but you've invested enough time right now to be able to get to the next step and figure out if my content is going to be a fit for your life to give you some outcomes that you're looking for. If that is the case, I want you to go visit revampyourvision.com. Get signed up for the $97 challenge. It's five days of absolute beauty. And you're going to receive a breakthrough. You're going to learn about all the tools we discussed here. Everything's in layout. You can download the radar PDFs and frameworks down below. Hope you took a bunch of notes. Hope you leverage this. What I'm giving away for free is ridiculous. My agenda, you just heard it. 
revampyourvision.com. Sign up for the challenge. If you do, I'll give you that coaching session that she just had right there that I had to interrupt. But listen to her feedback and make your decision. See you soon. For me, this is awesome. Um, and um, thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. I think I just hit another level. Like, I already knew, like, oh, yeah, like, he has this ability to do it. But then, like, now I've just experienced it on a, another level. Where I'm like, oh, shit. Like, <laughs> so, feel good about that. Good. That blesses me, too. And you'll get to see it, right? Yep. You'll get to see it.